Uh, I think I missed maybe four. Ooh. About four, yeah. God bless you. Yeah, and two of them were because I was on vacation, <laughs> uh, which I didn't intend to miss. Well, let's take a look at some of the questions that were coming your way in the mailbag here and uh, see what everybody's thinking about. You know, obviously, Nerlens Noel is one, but one question came in and said, with the trade of MCW and the emergence of Nerlens Noel in the system with more spacing and shooters, how about a guy like uh, Mudai, who's going to be possibly the third pick in the draft? Is he a good fit for what the Sixers currently have? Do you think he's a good piece? Well, I think he at least conceptually, is both a good and a bad piece. He's a, a bad piece in the fact that his shooting is, is still a pretty big question mark. Uh, and it's not something where I think it's necessarily just, you know, repetition with time, you'll get it better. It, it to me, is a, a very legitimate question mark. And I think we saw, you know, with with, uh, with New Orleans, but also eventually with, with Embiid as well, how much that floor spacing helps for a big man, uh, how much it helps New Orleans, you know, go off the dribble, how much it's going to help. Joel Embiid when he tries to post up or when he tries to pick and roll the basket. So in that respect, he's not necessarily a perfect fit. But I think what we also saw with New Orleans was that when there's a, a guard, uh, really any kind of wing player who can slash, get into the paint, and then looks to really pass once he gets in that paint and that defense rotates, uh, that I think that really benefits New Orleans' game. And I think Ish did that extremely well. Uh, you know, when, when Ish gets in the paint, he almost has to pass because he's just not much of a scorer. Moutier is a much more developed scorer. He's much more athletic. He has, has, has more talent. So he's not going to be passing quite as much. But I think we saw when that defense has to rotate, New Orleans can really be deadly. And I think you know there are some, some numbers with Ishmith on the court and off the court that really showed how much New Orleans improved. And I think that part of Moutier's game could really help New Orleans out next year. Derek Bodner is with us here looking at the Sixers. Another question comes in on the mailbag. Do you think Thomas Robinson will be back next year? Does he deserve to be back next year? Was he a positive uh, for this team? Well, he was certainly a positive, and he, he certainly, I think, deserves to be in the league. And I think, you know, I think his play down the stretch helped his case next year, helped his resume for when he does try to not only negotiate his contract, but also negotiate playing time. I think what's going to be interesting, you know, I think they really want shooters around Embiid, and specifically shooters in the front court around Embiid, to open up that lane, to let him post up, and really get the most out of that, um, you know, that ability, that talent that he has, that is so rare in this league. And they already have one big man in Nerlens Noel, who they, you know, drafted before Embiid, but who's, who's quite frankly too good to just give up on without seeing if they can play together. So they already have one big man who doesn't stretch that floor. So I think when you're looking at the first and second and third big men off the bench, I think they're really going to look for guys who can shoot. So I think in that respect, you know, that's not Thomas Robinson's strength. He did shoot a little better from the free throw line, but we're talking 60% better, better rather than in the, you know, 40s or 50s. Um, but by the same token, he fits their MO in the fact that he is a young kid who had a lot of problems coming out of college. You know, he was the fifth overall pick from Kansas. And they can get him cheaply. So I think in the, in the respect that, you know, basically giving him a tryout period and see if he can improve under Coach Brown's mentorship, I think he fits in that regard. It depends how much you're going to really look to surround and be the guys who can make him better and play off of his strengths. Because I don't think that's necessarily what Thomas Robinson is. But, you know, he rebounded the well so, so well. He has so much athleticism. And he's a good, hardworking kid, so it wouldn't shock me if they brought him back. It just depends how much they're really looking to play off of him being. Eric Bodner, NBA. Read his stuff on our website, 973ESPN.com. His latest mailbag is up. I want to ask you about Boston. They have a lot of assets. They've made the playoffs. Are the Sixers, what they're doing, similar to what Boston's doing, or do you think they are in two separate situations? Well, it's somewhat similar, and in, in, in obviously that they're building around draft picks. And Boston has you know just a ton of draft picks. Some of them are good. They have, you know, the two Brooklyn picks and also the right to swap picks with Brooklyn. So basically they can have Brooklyn's first round draft pick in not this year, but then the three years after that. So that's I mean that that's a huge huge asset in their favor. Some of the other picks aren't so good. Um they have I think a Clippers first round pick, a Memphis first round pick, both of those will be late. And then they also have a Timberwolves first round pick, which sounds great until you look at it and it's top twelve protected next year which, I mean, you know, the Timberwolves are not making the playoffs in the West. The pick is almost certainly going to land within the top 12. And then it's going to, going to turn into two second-round picks. So it's really not even a first-round pick. So the Sixers, you know, through their, their tanking, through their slow development, we'll call it, you know, they had a great pick in 2014, great value pick at least. We'll see if it turns out. They have a 
you know, third worst record in 2015, and they should have, I don't want to say a, one of the top three or four worst records, but probably one of the five to seven worst records. So those three picks right there to me have, have more potential to get an elite player, a real superstar, than most of, of Boston's picks. Uh, the question is going to come down to the Lakers pick for the Sixers, how, you know, if that ends up being a top five, and the Nets pick for the, the Celtics. Uh, whereas I think the Celtics have a little bit of flexibility in going and trying to make the playoffs this year is because they do have those those three Brooklyn picks in their back pocket. Because, you know, that, that, that franchise, you know, they made a run late, but they just look like they're on the verge of collapsing. They have very little resources to stop it. They owe a ton of money. They have no draft picks. That team could really just fall into the tank. So that, that Boston's rebuilding plan to me, you know, Isaiah Thomas was great. He played great this year. He's, to me, not a, a, a true superstar. You know, his defense isn't good enough. He's kind of grown, worn thin every stop he's been at. To me, their real rebuilding effort really revolves around those Brooklyn picks. And you know what? They did a great job getting those. They're certainly in a good position as well. Yeah, those are, you know, they got lucky with that situation where they basically fleece Brooklyn, and uh, that yeah, has you, really helped them out. You know, you find you find the, the right desperate team, and you can, you can get a King's Ransom in this league. Boston showed that, and I think the Sixers showed that with their, their draft day trade with Orlando as well. Hey, Derek, any optimism that Sarek would come out of that contract early, or is there any possible way that could happen, or is this something that is not going to happen until 2017? It's very unlikely to happen uh, this season. Um, you know, I, I, At the end of this season, for the 2016-17 season, that's when I think Sarek comes over. You know, he signed a contract, and when you sign those con- those contracts, they have a predefined out where it says, you know, if we get this much money, then then you can go. It, it's a predetermined buyout. There's not one in his contract for after this season. It doesn't mean it's possible. You know, if if his team wants to get rid of him, if if he becomes such a problem for them that that they, you know, want to find a way, they can then negotiate an opt out. But with how much he's getting paid, which how important he is to their team, it's going to be a a, a very large opt out. And the Sixers can only contribute 600000 towards that. So basically what you mean is Sarge would basically have to want to play for free in the NBA in order to come over here after the season, and I just don't really see that happening. Yeah, I don't think anybody wants to do anything, uh, you know, especially in the NBA at that price, free, which when he can play over there for nothing, or excuse me, for uh, for uh, what he's getting paid over there. I don't know what he's getting paid over there, but is it you know significant enough that he would want to stay there? I think it was somewhere in the 2 to €3 million euro range. And the thing when considering, you know, European contracts, uh, a lot of times that includes cost of living. They're, they're, that's post-tax rather than pre-tax. Gotcha. And the agent fee is already paid as well. So you're talking about 10% of that for the agent fee that a lot of guys over here spend. Um, so there, it's, it's, it might only be 2 to 3 million euros after, you know, the exchange rate. And obviously the euro is doing a little better than the American dollar. It's a, it's a pretty sizable contract. All right, uh, I like this question from Joseph. Uh, he wants to know, is it safe now for kids to buy a New Orleans Noel jersey? It's never safe to buy a jersey. <laughs> um, I, think, I, think, I think Noel, he should be here for a while. But should is, is, is the key word. You know, I think if Embiid comes back, shows he's healthy, and that concern is put to rest, then I think Embiid's the guy you build around. Can Noel play with Embiid? I think it's a legitimate question, and Brett Brown basically said that himself as well. So if... if you know, it turns out that a year into this, two years into this, Embiid's a real deal, Embiid's healthy, and they just don't fit together at all offensively. You know, New Orleans is going to have value. So rather than stick with a guy who doesn't fit with your franchise centerpiece, could he be traded? Absolutely, and that's why I would hold off at least a year or two before really buying a contract. All right, uh, this is an an interesting scenario from Anthony, too. He wants to know if the Lakers fall to six, that means the Sixers probably dropped into the five range. Would you rather be in the top three with no Lakers pick or have picked five and six? Yeah, to me that really depends where in the top three you fall. If you fall number one, I'm not trading that pick. Uh, I would rather have one than, you know, than let's say three, four, or five. And you would take who with one? Carl Towns. Okay, so you would rather have one and get Towns. And two, I would probably not. I would probably rather have two and just let the Lakers pick come next year as well, for the simple reason that I would then look to trade Okafor with the second pick to somebody who's going to pay a king's ransom for him. You know, I don't. I don't think Okafor really fits with the, with the Sixers or Embiid. Uh, I think, uh, and I think you're going to get a lot of, of really good value. So I think you can trade Okafor to move down to four or five, still get the guy that you want, and also get additional picks. So I would look to do that. But then just get the Lakers pick next year when it comes. But if you're talking, you know, the Sixers at three, 
Um, then I'd rather, you know, fall back to four or fall back to five, get the, the Lakers pick as well, because there's a lot of guys in that range in this draft that I would that I would like. I don't like that certainty of getting that Lakers pick as well. So I don't I don't see the drop from three down to say five as all that significant. And I would rather get the Lakers pick at that point as well. All right. For more of Derek's mailbag, go to 973ESPN.com. And as the offseason continues and the draft gets closer, we will continue to plug into Derek. And of course, uh, that NBA draft lottery, May the 19th, very important night for Philadelphia to see how many picks they'll end up with. Most likely the one, but percentages, uh, percentages go with one, but we will see on May 19th. Thank you, Derek. Thank you.